In today's lecture, we'll talk about banking system. So first, we'll talk about how do a bank function, and then we'll talk about a balance sheet of a bank and why do banks fail. So first, let's start with the functions of a bank or how do banks operate. To understand how do banks operate, first let's talk about a few definitions. First important definition is financial intermediary. It's an institution that operates between a saver with financial assets to invest and an entity who will borrow those assets and pay a rate of return. Example, banks, insurance companies, mutual funds. So, Financial intermediaries are institutions. For example, if you have say $100 in your pocket, you can keep it in your pocket. But the problem to keep it in your pocket is this, it's not going to grow at all because your $100 is not going to be $110 in one year. However, you have the option to put your money in a financial intermediary. These are institutions which accepts money from other people. Then they will invest that money for you and in future, they'll give you a return. In this way, your $100 is going to grow. And banks are one of those financial intermediaries. There are other intermediaries, as I mentioned, like insurance companies, mutual funds, all of these institutions do accept money and they will give you a return in future. Second important definition is that bank is a depositor institution, which means that it accepts deposits and then uses them to make loans which is the basic function of a bank so bank exists because we do deposit them our money to them and then they use this money to help people to buy a new car to buy a new home to pay for education to pay for vacation these are the loans they give out so let's try to understand how the banks do function so in this figure we'll try to explain the functioning of a bank so we have a savers on the one side and we have the borrowers on the other side and the banks are in between. Mind you, bank is a financial intermediary. So banks act as a financial intermediary because they stand between savers and borrowers as we discussed earlier. So savers place deposits with banks and then receive interest payments and withdraw money. So savers do go to a bank like you and me with pay the money, we deposit the money in the bank and banks give us a periodic interest payments and also we can withdraw our money at will depending on the type of account. For example, in checking account, you can pretty much go and withdraw your money anytime you want. On the other hand, in savings account, there are some withdrawal restrictions. However, savings account often pays higher returns. Now, when you go and put the money, what do, do banks do with those money? Basically, they collect all this money and they give it to the borrowers or lend that money, loan them out. So borrowers receive loans from banks and repay the loans with interest. So borrowers take the money. However, that doesn't come as free. They need to pay an interest. And when they pay interest, that becomes the income of the bank or also they repay their loans as well so in turn banks return money to savers in the form of withdrawals which also include interest payments from the banks to savers so basically borrowers pay some extra money based on the withdrawal they make or the money they borrowed and then banks return that additional money a part of it to the savers as interest payment and the, they keep the rest as their own profits. To have a better understanding of a bank, let's try to look into a balance sheet of a bank. So this is a typical balance sheet of a bank, which includes on the left side the assets, and the right side is into liabilities plus net, net worth. What is an asset? It's an item of value that a firm or individual owns. So for a bank, loans they have made, is an asset. Other assets, they hold a lot of US government securities and also reserves, that's the money they keep in their vault. All of them are assets because that's owned by the banks. On the other hand, liabilities, these are the amount or debt that a firm or individual owes. So 
every time we go and deposit a money with a bank, it becomes a liability for the bank. Good. In this particular example of a bank's balance sheet, your deposits are $10 million. Now this balance sheet is also known as T account. So that's the another term we use. So T account means bank's balance sheet. So it is the deposits of $10 million that banks have made, uh, received. Out of that $10 million, banks keeps $2 million as reserves. That means they will not use it for any other purpose. So here's a definition of reserves. So funds that bank keeps on hand and that it does not loan out or invest in bonds. A part they will give out as loan. That's they give out $5 million. And also they use $4 million to buy government securities. However, if we add it up, you have 5 plus 4 plus 2, $11 million and the deposits are $10 million. And the gap between your assets and liabilities is something called net worth, which is $1 million. So net worth is the excess of the asset value over and above the amount of the liability, total assets minus total liabilities. So you subtract assets minus liabilities, you get net worth. And net worth is also known as bank capital. So bank capital is the other term we use for net worth. Yes. Now this is pretty simple. So banks T account or balance sheets are pretty straightforward, especially for a traditional bank. However, modern banking has become much more complex. Now one of the unfortunate fact of the modern era is this, banks do fail. A lot of banks do fail and they have failed historically. Now the question is this, why do banks fail? To understand this, let's go into the net worth of a bank. So what is net worth again? It's assets minus liabilities, which is also called bank capital. So for a financially healthy bank, this net worth has to be positive. That means their assets has to be more than liabilities. If a bank has negative net worth, and depositors try to withdraw their money, the bank would not be able to give all depositors their money. What does a negative net worth mean? It means that the bank will not have enough money to pay back its depositors, which is a scary situation. Think about it one day if everybody shows up in a bank and try to withdraw money, banks simply doesn't have enough money or enough assets to pay back. And that's the situation when the bank fails. Now, why do bank fails or what are the situations where banks can fail if they make high rate of loan defaults for example during the 2008 financial crisis banks made a lot of mortgages and bad mortgages or loans and as a result many people failed to pay back and obviously when their loans didn't come back they failed also another reason that banks can fail because of asset liability time mismatch that the ability of customers to withdraw banks liabilities in the short term while customers repay its assets in the long term and this is a timing issue now you can have a situation where you give out a mortgage for 30 years but all your depositors on a short term basis and if they all of them shows up in a bank to withdraw money in one day you simply don't have enough cash flow to pay them so that's why bank Banking is a risky business. However, managing risk is one of the core functions of modern commercial banks, which we will not be discussing in this class, but which is a topic of discussion in upper level economics classes.